JK. But it's hard to find a guest who wants to come sit in a hot shop. It's like, wait, no, it's only 80, a little over 80. It's like 83 or 84 in the shop right now. But that's Which is in the shop. And it's with like 100% like humidity. It's, it's going to start raining in here and any minute. zero air movement. Yeah. All we're doing in here is breathing on each other. <laughs> You're listening to the Bent Motorsports Podcast with the owner of Bent Motorsports, David Beckett, and his crew, Jacob Hunsinger, James Hernandez, and Jake Russo. Listen in as the guys discuss all things motorsports, including tech tips and current shop projects. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we do have a couple of things that have happened. Uh, Jake's Explorer that he got for gratis. For free. For free. What have you done to that lately? You've been working on that for a little bit. Um, There's been a see. lot of stuff. I've shampooed carpets. We don't give a shit about There's that. Tell us the good stuff. This oh. just putrid <clears throat> stain on the back window that I think he refuses to clean because I think it's gross. So I think he just keeps it there just to spite me. You betcha. So... Let's see. We pulled the transmission because we were assuming when I got the Explorer, the thought was is that the transmission was going bad. Okay. Check the transmission. Add like five quarts to it. Runs great. I guess those things need fluid. Who would have thought? So uh, driving from there, I realized my I'm getting like a drip from the uh, bell housing that's going right onto a drip. When you get the drip, you know. Nobody um, likes a drip. No. drip. Nobody yeah. likes a drippy tranny. There's a... Uh, <laughs> Cat, one of the cats goes is right underneath the bell housing, so it's dripping on there and it's burning off. So you're not really seeing a puddle on the ground. But then, if I park it for a while, there's just profuse liquid everywhere. Oh, profuse no. liquid. He he read that in the dictionary. <laughs> yeah, profuse. That liquid is is profusely leaking. There we go. Is that better? Thanks. Mm-hmm. That's antiquated technology there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we pulled the transmission, pulled the transfer case. Turned out the transfer case had a severe leak in it, and the rear main seal was leaking. So replaced the rear main seal, and then swapped the transfer case to the Borg Warner 4406, which came out of the uh, Expeditions F-150s, F-250s, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. So we got rid of the all-wheel drive, full-time power waster. Direct and- Bolton? Direct Bolton, uh, you just hit the sure. gas tank with a hammer a little bit. You just, <laughs> just a couple you times. You just saws all <laughs> off a corner of the gas tank, and yeah. it fits right and you're in. You're good. You but, just uh, weld it up right on the outside of it. It's fine. You just uh, you know put a lot of argon in there. You know It uh-huh. makes it so it can't light on fire, and you're fine. Nice. Right, right. So uh, install wasn't terrible, but when you uh, go on the internet, just don't believe what you read. You do have to do a little bit of gas tank modification to it. Do it yourself. Figure it out. Well, he said. Yeah. He said. You say gas tank modification. You're not modifying the tank. You're modifying all the brackets and plates and everything that are around the gas tank, supporting the gas tank, and so, the pinch. Yeah, there's like a pinch. The pinch weld. Right? That, yeah, the that, pinch weld of the gas tank. That you just can just needs, fold it over. You can fold that over. Yeah. Um, the bracket does need to be chopped. There's a corner of it, like you said. Right. And honestly, if you were to pull the entire gas tank, uh, which is kind of a pain. Take that out. You could put the, the transfer case in there and not modify the bracket, but you would still have to modify the pinch on the gas tank. So right. uh, it was easier for me to just modify the gas tank and uh, take the bracket off and support it with the jack. So the whole point of this is that now you don't have all-time all-wheel drive. You actually have selectable four-wheel drive. And I have a four-low, which right, you have definitely four, Which you out. didn't have before. Correct. There was no settings before. It was just all-time. Which I didn't know. I thought that the Explorers were a little bit more, uh, you I, know, trail-ready than that. I believe that the f- <laughs> the smaller ones, the non-5.0s, did have oh. selectable or previous generations. I know that the ones that had uh, the tractor beams up front – <laughs> I feel like we said tractor beams pretty much every single podcast we've done. On we try. Point we try. To make, I'm sweating my ass off. I am too. It's so um, hot in here. So uh, the previous generations were awesome. Super easy to lift. Uh, you could swap in the 1356, I think it was. Those were out of the Broncos. Those didn't have a slip yoke on the rear of the transfer case. So it was all uh, ready for, like, I don't know, Tom Wood drive shafts. You could get them all done. So those were really cool. Uh, perfect for off-roading. And I think those... I think they're still in aluminum housing, but easy swap as well. But those ones, uh, the TTB ones are badass. And that transfer case you put in there is like twice the size of the one you took huge. out. They put them in an F-250, so I'm hoping that it'll at least stand up to a little bit of abuse. But 
It's pretty sweet. The only issue we're having now is the speed sensor. Oh, I, wah, wah, I feel like uh, explorers are like kind of the redheaded stepchild of the throwaway. I think you're right. Build. I think nobody, which is funny because when I see a like a nice built explorer, I'm like, dang, that's sick. And you got four seats, and like it's comfy and it's big enough. It's the, it the forerunners are huge in the market, but the explorers are just like. Oh, no, Which, no, 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 it's I mean, fine. the yeah. forerunner, your forerunner, to be honest, felt small. It did, it did. And the exp- the explorer doesn't feel that small. <laughs> Two guys sleeping in the back of a forerunner, shit oh, gets man. cramped. It was fun, <laughs> but I mean, I I really like a lot of explorer builds that I've seen, and I think they're underrated. And I feel like, yeah, there you always you end up with one, and then you're like, well, I don't want to like buy something else to build so i guess i build this you're right you're exactly right <laughs> i was it like is. it's like oh, the hemi down all right car, you know fine. but then i started getting into it looking online sick. and there's so many good ways to do it plus it already has the five liter in it it may not be like extremely powerful but there's plenty of support i mean if you want to do a little bit of modification because it's cramped that motor did not belong in no, that car no, there is all. no freaking it's space it's big but there's but potential. you do have a you do have a five zero under the hood. Yeah, you know that's already there. You don't have to do anything. It's already just done. It's not the Windsor though, right? It's a different. No, it's it's a, di- it's a three hundred two. It's so, just not forged on the bottom end. I don't think right. The, so the Windsor, I believe that's still a Windsor block. Okay, but you still so this one has the GT forty P heads, which just means they have a little bit more flow, whatever. But you remember seeing the original exhaust manifolds. Oh my god. The outputs are the size of a quarter. I'm not even kidding. I, I thought I thought I saw these these manifolds on the ground when Jake was doing it and I thought he um he had to like hit them with a hammer to like fit something <laughs> out because cause the the passageways were literally like the size of a thick Sharpie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're I terrible. Would, I would give it like a grape size. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty much, right? You, you'd, you like, struggle to fit a grape in. They were so terribly small, and I was like, what the heck? And then the new ones that he put in were, you know, actual They're, actual they're a little size. better. And you know what? The, all the difference is right there is, like, a, a half year. So I had the stamped ones, and because they're stamped, you know, they had to fit the material and blah, blah, blah. The ones I put on were cast, and at least they took out some of, like, the uh, – I don't know imperfections and all the stuff with these stamped and like yeah. formed material that was blocking those the passageways. Cracked, right? That's why yeah, they cracked. Them? It t- turned out to be they had an exhaust leak. It was not on the headers. It was actually on the somewhere else. Yeah, it was somewhere <laughs> else. So I had to go and find that one. But it was still a good little uh, build. That, or it was an upgrade. You know, it, it is upgrade. a little bit more flow. And yeah. now I won't have to replace them later on. So yeah, right. You also fabbed yourself a real nice uh, rear bumper. Fabbed up the rear bumper. Um, anything, one, anything to say about a rear bumper fab, say, for anybody who hasn't done it? When I looked online and I looked at all these different ideas and whatnot, uh, you really – a rear bumper can seem really good. So mine isn't lifted yet. I've decided to do all the ancillary shit before I decide to actually, like – because I don't want to – this does not have, like, the Forerunner did where you could put an upper control arm and be good, you know, and be stoked about it. This one is, like, you either put a long travel on it you put a big stupid drop down or a drop bracket lift on the front, or because it's if it, it's a arms, <clears throat> yeah, it's a arms up front, and the design it's torsion as well. So it's you can do coilover conversions, but still the uh, CVs are the limiting factor. So a lot of people just blow up CVs all the time, and Sick. I don't feel like doing that. So I took uh, a couple designs of four links and three links off of some jeeps and stuff, and fe- uh, took SolidWorks and created a bracket a bracket system that we can hopefully install on this in the future put a dana 44 up front or something like that the only thing i'm like working on thinking up designing putting on paper is the steering system which hopefully i'll use like a uh the boxy the previous generation explorer uh steering box hopefully i think that guy has the same exact hoses so it'll just bolt right in Uh, i've read a couple different forums on it but we'll see some people also use the uh, fj80 boxes out of it or the fj80 or the 60 whatever uh steering box mounts outside of the frame rails that's another one but the only issue with that is tire clearance so hopefully eventually this already has the 8.8 in it so just put a locker locker in the rear uh dana 44 up front and then just put a PSC steering ram in it. Exactly. Yeah. Just full hydraulic. Full yeah. hydraulic steering. Forget it. Honestly, it for a Might free well. truck, you've put in so much. I've seen you put in a lot of time and effort and make some cool stuff. Just like 
the little things you're doing, making a making a fire, um, oh, extinguisher the extinguisher bracket, yeah. and like just cleaning it up. And I've been tied up with stupid with life, so I don't get to work on stuff right now. And watching you do that is really fun for me. And then also like Russo, of course, just with the the E28. That is, you know, that's a pretty big deal, which is it drives, cool. man. Everybody's yeah. stoked, dude. It's so fun. I mean, I, are we still talking about your stuff? Or well, yeah. One more thing on Jake's stuff before we move on to Russo. Uh, James just said you you got the truck for gratis. Oh, do you want the running total? Yeah. What is the total now that you're I've, into this vehicle? Every single thing, uh, including smog, registration, insurance, uh, cleaning it. Just all the like the, the every single material that I have in this to put it to where it is right now. And tires, wheels, I'm gonna guess. full front suspension, uh, headers, transfer case, all the fluids in the entire Fabbed vehicle. Bumper. Fabbed bumper. I have cleaning the carpets, uh, cleaning the everything I'm go inside 1800 of it. Eighteen hundred bucks. Eighteen hundred bucks for all that stuff, including a drive shaft, U joints. I want to say like two G's. Two G's. Let's see. I might be overshooting. Do you even know what it is? <laughs> no, I, uh, I every time I make a purchase on this, I change it up. Yeah, Jake's wised up since we were kids. We, Seven uh, keeps a tally of it. Yeah, <laughs> Seven, we used to just throw throw yeah. money at it and then, and then sell and then it. And you go, dude, we made money. Oh, yeah. six hundred bucks will do. Make the BS oh, calculation no. in your head where you know it's not right, but you're like, oh, that sounds good. That sounds about right. Seventeen thirty one fifty four. Nice. Yeah. Eighteen hundred wasn't far off. Including mm. rear main seal, trans filter, so everything, crazy. spark plugs, wires, headers, gaskets. And think about it: when you buy a used car, it needs most of this stuff anyway. So might as well just go out and get a cheap POS, and yeah. then yeah. understand that you're just gonna go. And put a bunch of money into it to make it, you know, a reliable, cool thing. Too many people are going out there, and that's why they're worried about buying used cars because they're used cars, and they don't want to admit to themselves that if I buy a used car, you know, it, it, it has to, it's going to break, right? I'm like, well, yeah, but you factor that into the price, exactly. So that's why you gotta, I don't okay. know. That's a good idea, actually. All right, so cheapest car that you bought that you thought you were getting a deal on, and then give me a guesstimate of what all you had to do with it, like an, an issue that came up with it, you know? Like, because I bought a Volkswagen Bug. The guy said, oh, the head gasket's blown. It's fine. Well, you know, $900 later, I sold it for, like, 100 bucks. so there was yeah, something wrong with that. Yeah, that's hard. I bought a lot of cars over the years. Um, well, the most successful cheap buy would be my truck that I'm driving right now. Oh, yeah, you're killing oh, it. Yeah. What did you do with that one? And what was so the it's a '97 Ford F250 heavy duty, uh, one owner truck. The guy was a cabinet maker, and uh, it had 300 and I don't know 305 thousand miles on it. I think when I went to look at it, so it wouldn't pass smog. It had a check engine light, wouldn't pass smog. He was over it. He'd owned it for you know since '97, so he went out and bought a brand new truck, treated himself to a new truck. Because yeah, you must should, be nice. Because you just had that <laughs> yeah. this truck for how long, and it lasted yeah. you its whole life. Absolutely you know? right. And he had just gotten done spending a grand on the transmission. So, and then the check engine light came on, and he couldn't smog it. So he's super bummed about that part of it. Um, but he he said, you know, I, I you know, what do you give me for it? So I I, I said I'll give you fifteen hundred bucks. So I gave him fifteen hundred bucks for the truck, and uh, came back. And the check engine light was because the um, memory on the ECU was resetting every time you shut the car off. So my hope is that it was going to be a fuse because there's a fuse for that. And if that fuse blows, then the ECU can't hold a memory. It resets every time, never goes into readiness. Uh, it ended up being the actual ECU was crapped out. So I think the ECU for that from Napa was was like 125 bucks because pre uh pre uh imaged or whatever yeah yeah yeah. pre-flashed uh you just give them your vid number and they pre-flash it right and you buy it It it's like 125 bucks that's bizarre and you give them your old one and i plugged it in i went down to the smog guy and bam smogged done sweet um was that pre-ready is is that pre uh obd2 no 97 is obd2 so it has readiness monitors and everything. Yep. Did yep. you have to go through that whole process? Yeah, or yeah. Was just, it I, on easy? that one, it's easy. You drive it around for a couple of days, and it's good to go. Yeah. It's not like you got to do Grand all the Cherokee that we yeah. dealt with. Dude, the, the M3 BMWs. was the worst. Yeah, it's not like, I, yeah BMWs yeah. is the worst. BM this E36, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot myself. <laughs> it's so stupid. I'm I, like, <laughs> I can feel them hairs away from getting that thing to clear, and then just something will happen, and it's like, nope. 
I have yeah. a great record with the cops, so just let me drive it around because I know that it has like uh, the tags are up to date and everything. So yeah, oh you know, for sure won't get pulled over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I drove it to O'Reilly like a couple weeks ago, scared. and I was like a half mile back uh, from away from here, and I was like, "Oh man, this thing totally isn't registered or smogged or anything. I'm riding dirty, like not even a license plate on the back of it." I you know. know, it's hilarious. Yeah. So David's David's truck definitely is yeah, a, because, a because I could sell that thing right now for three grand, thirty five hundred. I could easily double my money on that car. So and what figure, all do you have into it now? Like if you, what over the because we've had it for about a year now, I'd say. Yeah. We because it's me and you. Well, let's see. No, we it's put, been a couple years now. No way. We, yeah. We put new tires. No. We didn't put new tires on. We got hand me down tires from a friend. <laughs> yeah. I brought friend. some from Havasu and yeah, like, I think yeah, I got sure. two from you and two from Ken or yeah. whatever. Both of them, right? Because yeah, both. Guys I had a have full set of four, truck. and two of them were two of them were shot, and then Ken had the same exact truck as my mom, and then he, we took two of them off of his, and the other two were shot. So it was like oh, odd how that truck consistently kills tires. We modified the uh, lumber rack so that the hole over the cab part is a meshed rack. Yeah, that was just dope. that was just nothing. That was time and material. Fun. Using some shop time to do that, and then um, I don't think I've done anything else, right? Oh no, we had we did, a, uh, a fuel pressure regulator went that out. That was a that was a pretty big. And then we had uh, we did the front. We did uh, one fuel pump, one of the front tank fuel pump, hm. front shocks. Oh yeah, and we did the, uh, and the front the, uh, the, radius the arm beam bushings. Radius arm bushings. But for a truck with three hundred thousand miles that you got for fifteen hundred bucks. For for twenty three hundred, I think probably is about the estimate that we have in all of it. Right. It's pretty rad. Dude, oh, and yeah. I'm telling you, and you can come do a stop sign in that thing and I'll think, Oh no, it hums. died. Oh no, it's dead. Oh no. Oh wait, it's, no. So it's running. quiet. It's it running. Is. It runs super <laughs> smooth. Plus transmission has a warranty on it. Right, transmission has a warranty on it. You drove it all the way. I drove it uh, in the, the hottest like time, like a month ago, and then you drove it the next day all the way to El Centro, or no, to Yuma. Yuma, Yuma. and back, towing a trailer. All the way back. Totally. When there's 115 out there in El Centro and Yuma. So, it cleaned up really nice, you know. too. I got to say, like, the Ford factory paint, that thing came back to life. No, you're good at paint. Well, no, 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 not even that. Like, I was just really surprised. I mean, white's a pretty easy color to do, but... You think from a car that's been sitting outside, doesn't get washed that often, like it just, I don't know, not everyone likes to clean and wash their cars like I do, but it was yeah, surprising. I don't wash cars anymore. That's what I'm saying. Like, for just being like the rain every few months that it gets, it, you know, it like came back to life like nobody's business, and it's, yeah. it's held up since then, too. It, I don't see anything. Uh, that's that old lead-based paint. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what it did, you can look at my, my O O two. GMC, and that's when they went to the like, water base, right? Mm-hmm. And like it's only been, you know, so many years, but it started to peel and flake and all kinds of stuff off. It looks like crap. I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They've they've gotten the uh, they've gotten that method of water base pretty much worked out now. But in the early years, it sucked. Oh yeah, blood. I feel like it was what late nineties that it happened. Yeah, because especially with like uh, GMs, if you see any single white GM Honda Civics, dude. that's from like the late '90s, every single one is just cracked, and there's yeah. just like the clear goes just completely gone. Yeah, yeah. There was a, um, it was a, it was in the early nine, mid to early '90s that they really started doing it. Yeah, my mom had an Oldsmobile, the Bravada. Yeah, remember that? It yeah. was the, it was the, it was the Blazer. The, yeah, the what? The it was bra- the Chevy bra- Blazer, the Bravada, but it was called the Oldsmobile Bravada. Okay, I remember this thing. And it was it was just a four door Chevy Blazer, but the mini one, right? The small ones, like the Jimmy or whatever you called them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that paint was just angry at that car and wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> it was just it, exiting the vehicle like so fast everywhere. And we went back to the dealership, and they were like, "Yeah, it's this water based paint that we're supposed to, you know, the dealer, the manufacturer, especially has to something use. about white." Every car that I've seen from that era of, of the when they were figuring out water based paints, white was just a horrible just color. Terrible. Yeah. Well, we do we the dealership actually uh, the, the manufacturer Oldsmobile paid for her car to go to a regular body shop and get stripped and painted with a lead based with paint. with real paint. <laughs> well, with solvent based okay, paint, solvent based, right? Yeah. And like, real lead based paints like back in like the sixties. Yeah, that's or different. Something. That was that's, that's like that was the house. Yeah, and, Car, uh, cars and was toys like enamel from China, yeah. and and the red M and M's. China, yeah, and red M and M's. What was the stuff that BMW they use like Glastron that just had this these gnarly? What? It's called Glastron, I think. 
and they just use these gnarly chemicals. But if you see like any original paint, like older BMW, you just buff the Your thing out. Your CSI six thirty five. That was all original paint. Yeah, too, that paint that looked thing, great once you polished it. Yeah, yeah and then you move into ninety six, and uh, not so much. Not no. so good. Mm. The paint on my Beamer right now is awful. Struggling. Yeah. I think it's only gotten. Wor- I think somehow when I wash it, it takes off even more of whatever's already on there, and it just gets more worse likely. and worse every time. <laughs> Yeah, you took off the, the protective layer of film that was helping right. it. The, yeah. the dirt shield. <laughs> yeah, the dirt shield. <laughs> so it got even worse. So now what have you been doing, James? James has been a ghost around here lately. He's going to school and educating himself. No, I'm not doing that. I mean, I am a... When you I, went to a school, did you not? Oh, I went to bartending school? Yeah. School. I did, I, cool. I did that. I've been doing freelance photography. Um, that is on... That's taking a break from that right now because I hurt my leg. Oh, so, and you got to run around at weddings and try to capture moments. You, you have can. to do whatever. I mean, I, I like doing outdoor stuff, and so I was working for a fishing company and, um, yeah, doing weddings and stuff, and you just have to – you never really realize how important that is. You're like, oh, I can't kneel down or, like, mm. or, or step up onto this ledge or whatever. So I'm taking a break from life right now. Um, That's all right. Which kind of sucks because there's no extra funds to do cool car things. Um, we need to strip – the Celica, which it's already pretty much like 85% stripped. There's a couple of plumbing that we left in there and some wiring that we need to take out, but we need to stitch weld the entire chassis, which is going to be David here was trying to get me a rotisserie, which I thought was going to be amazing, um, but we don't really care too much for it after we found out the trouble of the whole thing. So yeah. I just got to get in here and uh, get dirty one weekend. It's just been like 100 degrees all the time. Oh, man, dude, I'm so and unmotivated it, for this Every day weather. we come in here and we're just like, oh, good, at 2 to 6, we're going to hate it. I would it. so much rather just, like, try to work until, you know, like November and stack cash and then come in here in the winter when it doesn't suck right. and be like, cool, I'm going to build my car in, like, three months. Mm-hmm. Like hey, That's like, okay, so Norwegians and, like, that general area – they have the raddest oh, Norwegian Norwegian area. Yeah, like that's no, no, no so you know, for Norwegian, some reason Norwegian, it's Norwegian like it's called Norwegian it's called Norway Norway the oh, Norwegian oh. people have like the craziest car culture because they are literally just sheltered in their houses for this whole gnarly winter that they go they through get and they snowed just in. they just build they these like leave. crazy ass cars that are just like Do you know how irritating that would be? You're snowbound in your house yeah. for like 4 months or 5 months however long it is. How do you go to a rally? You're working on it. Yeah, and you're like fuck i need yeah. this little part or i can't do anything like yep. you're trying to build an engine and you you don't have a freaking valve keeper and you yeah. gotta order it from like let's say a country near norway like what, what are they gonna do bring it to you on a dog sled i mean you can't just run down to the store i'd be pissed <laughs> yeah name another country near norway uh, no there's uh, like they're, now they all come down it's like uh you know it's you know it's czechoslovakia south america down the country. is that <laughs> <laughs> i don't fucking know <laughs> Everybody's thinking they're like, I'm pretty sure it's in Europe. There's right? three countries it's in Europe. Europe. It's over there, right? Come on. Well, I didn't pay attention to school. I don't know that shit. That was a long time ago for David. And there's another country it. right next door. Finland. What's Sweden? Sweden. Sweden. Sweden Finland. Are, Swedes are crazy car people too. I don't care about any people of that are gonna stuff. tell me I'm an idiot when I'm wrong. Na- I don't really name care about a Norwegian name. car brand. No, I'm not saying they have Shut their the own cars. Up. I'm just saying the ones that they already have there. <laughs> I know. I'm asking these, like, you to things. tell me a Norwegian car brand. Like, who? What kind of car? What kind of Ford Raptor do you buy in Norway and modify? Because you think it's think. thick. What no. kind? What? What's the Ford Mustang of Norway that constantly gets crashed? Oh, like a Probably Volvo. Like a Clio. No, like or a Volvo 240. No joke. Born from jet. All like the guys from Norway. The guys from See, Finland. Yeah, they have like all the crazy Volvos that are like smart. V8 and- that's like that's literally what my car is based off of because they're just like, oh, like you know, Sven. What do we need in car? And Sweden, like, in Finland. <laughs> oh, let us have the solid rear axles and uh, the front wheels that are turning. And if it is big and heavy, it stays glued to ground, and we go very fast. Yes, that's that's, that's where all the crazy rally guys come from, that's right? Very impressive yeah. impersonation. And Scandinavian all kinds flick. Of, all kinds of drivers. Flick. You know, they're just, they're fast. They're crazy people. No, on the opposite side, what about uh, Cuba, right? Now they actually have a Napa. Do they? Do they have Napa? Dude, they got it. Well, it's all opened up now. So, you know, there's You know, but you know, they're they're not impressed because all their shit's from the 50s. And Napa does not supply old shit like that. Yeah, so what are are the guys going to do? Are the guys down there going to go down there? 
and actually go to the new parts stores that are opening up and get parts and continually try to, rest- or they're going to just shove them into the ocean and buy a fucking Kia. <laughs> I don't know. Right? Are they going to be like, you dude, think- I don't want to drive this. There's, I want to drive there's a Kia. There's a supply and demand for the Napa there Sorrento's because it's like, life. do we carry these new car parts that nobody even has, that nobody's even using, or do we carry like the typical small block Chevy or whatever but that dude, goes that's what I would do because those guys are all geniuses about swapping engines, right? Yeah. So you just go down there and you just open up a store that sells bolt-in like Chevy 350s. Yes. Carbureted Chevy 350s. And like, yeah. Built, done, ready it's to coyote plug Coyote motors. Hooked to a transmission <laughs> and everything, just ready to go in. That's true. They'll just buy the whole engine. The LS swap no, market there would a, be It's ideal. a poor country, right? So they're not going to be able to just buy an engine from you, but. Yeah. When was know. the trade embargo? It was in the late 50s, early 60s, it was right? It Cuban Missile Crisis, right? Because they were uh, oh, he... going to try to store Russian missiles there, and we shut everything off, but now Barack Obama opened it all back up, and that's good. I mean, it's good for Cuba, right? They're it's good for yeah, BJ Baldwin. It seems cool. They're good now, right? Is it? Those people I would love to go there for long enough. The... What was that called? What was that BJ Baldwin video? I don't know. BJ Baldwin jumps rampage? shit. BJ Baldwin has rampage? lots of money. Yeah. Might have been Rampage. She, Number did four. Did you see the one where he's cruising through? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's rad. BJ Baldwin's going to hear this and say, those guys are jerks. <laughs> those guys are dumb. You're just jealous. I'm like, no, you I know what? I am. I follow him on the Instagram, dude. It's fun to watch. He likes driving things on two wheels, like his little razors and uh, or whatever they are, Can Ams or everything. Whatever. Somebody he's got. get this guy a motorcycle. Yeah, he clearly <laughs> wants to be on two wheels. No, BJ, you know we make those, right? <laughs> no, you don't have to keep doing that no, to the trucks. No. no, you don't. This is my idea. Um, we love you, BJ. You're actually pretty cool. Uh, yeah, cult cur- uh, car cultures around the world are pretty. Cool, Kirk yeah. and Bear. Yeah. Now, now we're just like kind of a, uh, a, uh, I don't know. Everything's been done so far, all, yeah. and all the stuff that I see nowadays that I think is cool is kind of Drift oh. Comanche has not been done. Drift so Comanche has not that. been done. The last cool thing I saw was the guy who took like a thirty. I talked about this like a couple podcasts ago, but the guy who took like it was like a thirty nine Plymouth and put uh, a Lexus, um, you know suspension under it and then dropped a chevy crate motor in it and then made a hill climber out of it and i was like nice. that sounds awesome you're awesome somebody should make <laughs> like a uh this is my idea totally but like a mustang but put like an sr20 or like some sort of cool ass motor in there and then drift it and like i don't know japan or something i don't know it came to me like last night i was thinking about it it would just be the coolest drift <laughs> that, car ever or like a 1jz was it a maybe a 1jz that's my might have been what i was dreaming about i don't know <laughs> I'm not sure. And you have this guy that, that wants to rival you. Did that happen in your dream, too? That happened. I might have happened. Yeah, yeah. you got to go up and down the hill. My and... dad's in the Navy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a crazy right. dream. Right. I think I had the same one. Dude. Connected. Yeah. You should get a 350Z. How many gears did Ooh. your car have? Like 19, 17. bro. Yeah. I just it was one of those new it. transmissions. New one. That's a new one. Those are Paddle sick. shifters. <laughs> so I'm going to flat tow my Jeep tomorrow for the first time. Are you pointing up or down with your hitch now, or are you even? Even. You should see this riser. So his his hitch on his uh, RV. So technically, if you have your your, essentially, when you're towing something, <laughs> if the tow bar points down, the problem is like if you slam on the brakes, it'll kick the front of the Jeep up. Like let's say in an emergency, it'll kick that up and it'll go because it'll do all this crazy things. It'll, it'll cantilever. Do it'll cantilever into Math the back. Will happen. Math, will, Math happen. will blow your mind. <laughs> so he gets this riser that's like his it's hitch comes out. It's only technically 10 inches. It's 14 inches tall. <laughs> 17 and a half. <laughs> it's huge. And it looks sick. It's like the guys back in the 90s would have put on their big old high-rise Toyotas that had the huge drop down balls yes. right but yes. mine has to go the other way because my motorhome is super low and my jeep is super high so it has to rise up oh and it has the two to... pieces of strap steel that's like an eighth of an inch thick go into the frame dude the thing weighs like 30 pounds i'm like can you that thing is giant yeah, awesome. that's cool that's but yeah sick. plus or minus three inches from level is your variance you can have so so we we deleted the steering jake uh, russo and i test tested it the other day and drove out of the parking lot and the steering wheel locked even though we thought Numerous we had times. it in the right position to be unlocked. Um, but apparently my ignition switch is so old or worn out that it didn't matter where I had it. It was going to try to lock. So we tore the column apart and just ripped the lock mechanism out. Now we don't have to worry about it. 
David definitely has my has a has like my future family dream set up. Being able to flat tow a sick Jeep. You see, like, look at the bikes on the back. Look at that. I know you guys are all gonna go so many bikes to the lake in your cruisers. Yeah, dude. And then we got it set up so that like right now on the back of the Jeep is the uh, bicycle rack to hold all the beach cruisers. Um, but then if we're going to the desert, there will be a rack on the back that will hold two motorcycles. Yeah. And I'm putting a rack on the front of the motorhome that will hold one motorcycle. Did you see the guy? Uh, there was one on Instagram just uh, this week where it was like a dude in uh, like a brand new Cummins diesel or something towing a trailer, flat towing a Jeep. And it went all squirrely and sideways oh. because he's like dude. double doubling up. <laughs> so that was the problem with that was that. He was double towing, right? Which is fine. Yes. But the rule, at least in this state of California, is that the first towed trailer has to be a fifth wheel, and then the second one could be a bumper tow, right? So you can do that in California. You can if you have a Class A license and you're licensed and you have the endorsement for double tow. So I know I knew a couple people who have a truck with a fifth wheel. The government. Wheel. <laughs> they have a truck government. with a fifth wheel camper, uh -huh. and then they flat tow their Jeep behind the fifth wheel. But this guy was bumper towing a camper a and then bumper towing another trailer with a razor on it. Sketchy. Yeah. And sketchy. Especially when you're doing that, I feel like you you're you, you really need to pay attention to when you can't and you want and, and want, so and in you could do could, anything could flat toe anything. <laughs> but if you notice on that video, if you watch, he had the razor on this uh, tandem axle flat trailer the razor was too was forward i was that's what it I was wasn't trying forward to say. enough it, he put it over the axles where you think right i'm i want all the what do you think the axles right but you need to have some more tongue weight on it or you're gonna have problems yeah uh, so, did you see that video on uh instagram and it was actually rc car it was an rc car on like a mm -hmm. uh, conveyor belt mm -hmm. and they swapped the weight they had little tiny ring weights and they moved it Ooh, i've seen this. it had the trailer they yeah. moved it from the front to the center, to the back, they had all the different things, and genius. Immediately, it had the death like right because you didn't have enough tongue weight, right? Exactly, right. You place too much weight on the axle, or the weight is exactly neutral over the axles, but then the tongue has no weight on it. You need a little weight on the tongue. This guy didn't do that. See, that was the issue when I towed the burgundy car home. Was that I think it was so neutral on the trailer that there was just there was no plus or minus on the tongue. And that thing was all over the place. And I was towing it with a, the... It was a lowered truck. I was towing it with you know the single cab Chevy. <laughs> Dolly towing cars that weigh zero. Yes. <laughs> it is hilarious. Uh -huh. Try not to overheat your Denali. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. When we... Uh, that, that story is... Uh, when we brought the Celica from my house over here the other month... You uh, are that kid. We almost blew up the Denali. <laughs> Because the thing is so old and dying that, like, it always has um, error messages, and it has the little thing, and I just don't believe them anymore, because I'm like, nah, I just put a bunch of coolant in it. Like, James is like, I'm so proud of this old girl for towing this thing, and all of a sudden, overheating, it's overheating. Like, the thing's the just, one... like, pegged at red. <laughs> no! And I was like, oh, no, this sucks. Uh, do you remember seeing the front tire on the Ranger when I brought it back? Yeah, and it was dolly? off of it. Oh, yeah, I towed <laughs> something with flat tires, and then uh, awesome. it, it had worked itself out of the straps. And Ooh. then it was just like when I would like actually accelerate, it would kind of teeter back, but it just had just enough strap pressure to be like, okay, I'm not going to come off the trailer. And then you'd stop and it would roll forward like a little bit past the edge of the dolly and then it would <laughs> yes. come back in. We had one. We, were, we, we would go to Kansas every year to race at nationals and we had the Spitfire in an enclosed trailer, right? And the, the tailgate of the trailer um, wasn't the one that goes down like a ramp. It went the other way so that it could become a shade. For cool. us, right? Oh, nice. And then in the front, there was a bunk bed over the hood uh, of the car that was a queen size bunk, right? Cool. So, enclosed wooden trailer with like the aluminum corrugated sides or whatever. So, we're driving there and we hit a pretty good bump in the road, right? And we would strap um, the front wheel down, the front right wheel down, and like the left rear wheel. Like you go a strap over the wheels, right? Mm -hmm. Not so we didn't want to cinch down the suspension. So we hit a big bump, and we're going along, and we <laughs> it start like, feeling, you know, when you hit the brakes, you, like, feel a surge, and you're like, oh, that was weird. Maybe the trailer brakes aren't working that's, really yeah, good, you know, or <laughs> I'm trying to adjust the trailer brakes. <laughs> so, you know, like, I don't know, a couple hundred miles later, we were, I finally had to get something out of the trailer, and I go back there, and I notice you open the side door, and the strap is not on the tire anymore. I'm like, what? Dude, that's no good. So we open it all up. Dude, that car had been going 
I, every time I hit the gas, it go bang and hit the back. And every time I hit the brakes, it go bang and it hit the front. No, that's <laughs> For like rad. 200 miles, that that's thing was going bing, bang, bing, bang. You didn't Dude, put one the fucking more brake room. on or put it in gear now? No way, man. That shit gets broken, man. You strap the wheels down. You let everything be free. Cause you let it be free. How far ways. forward and back did it move? It was like, a, how much room was there between the front and the back? Well, the it wasn't hitting the front wall because we had tires and the toolbox up there. So it was going about eight inches and hitting that. And then back another 10 <laughs> inches to hit the, the rear door. That's so dude, fun. Another just good, enough to feel a surge. Dude, basically. another good hit on the door, and that thing would have been gone, dude. And I wouldn't have even known it. I would have just been driving. The Somebody else is in a spitfire behind us. Wow, wow. it's really slowing down quick. It's painted the same color. He oh, no, it's, it's, it's flipping. <laughs> it dropped bastard. Let's keep going. That's some Fast and Furious stuff Wow, right it's there. on fire now. That's crazy. <laughs> we should go home. Amazing. No. No, we got to race driving. again, too. God dang it. Yeah, towing's fun. That's cool. Could you I imagine showing up to that race and just n- having an open trailer with like nothing in it, no tools, and then you're just like, "Well, how far, how far back is it? Do we even go get it?" Yeah. Yeah. Said a word, <laughs> man. I would have just got. I would have just unhooked the trailer, left it there, and just drove home. Do you watch? Do you watch the races? <laughs> Wrote the whole go. thing off. <laughs> do you watch the races? Is it still worthy of a? Uh... Nope, I would have left. Everybody would have wanted to know. Hey, man, what happened? Where's your car? Why aren't you racing? Oh, I didn't bring Were it. you just... telling it with your dad's Dodge that was lowered? Yeah, but at the time, uh, the Dodge was not lowered. It was a 1500? It was a 2500, but it that was, was a cool r- truck. regular. That was probably one of my favorite cars that David's owned uh, for wh- some reason. Well, was that was a 5, what's that, 5.4? Five, five, that was a 5.9. It had a Hemi. Oh, that's the. Nice. What's that, the 318? Um, no, no, it's got to be the a bigger, 360 the, something. Yeah, 360, right? Maybe. Oh, the 5.2 is the 318. Right. Yeah. Got it. It was good. It was cool. I Sounds love, cool. I want to, so, of course, like, we all love diesels, and I'm like, well, I want to no, tow no. massive, awesome things just with for diesels. Fun. I just want to be a, you should be a truck driver. I know. I tow, like, heavy loads. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love when you're like, because oh, people are like, well, down. what kind of car are you going to get? And I'm like, oh, I'd be cool to get, like, a Super Duty diesel or something. And they're like, why? I'm like, because I can tow the moon. And they're like, you don't tow? And I'm like. I would. It's yes. nice to know I that would I if I had it. Because I don't have – it's the same thing with 4x4. Four four. They're like, I want 4x4. Four four, and they're like, you don't do anything with 4x4. Four four. It's because I don't have it. You stupid – Yeah. If I had it, I would do I it. Cars if if do you it. get a Super Duty, can we please get a boat off of Craigslist Free? Yes, of course. We can a, get a free a boat. A free boat and just go Leave out and me row out. It. No, just this has around. been the thing forever. <laughs> just tow it around. Just tow exactly. Around. Just no, tow. Like, <laughs> that's, that's all it'll be good for. Exactly. There was a boat over off of – You know where the 15, not even going to explain it. Off the 15, there's a spot near Deer Springs, yeah. and somebody just dumped a boat with a bunch of trash in it and, like, spray painted the side. Trash How long ago was that? Two weeks. I think I saw it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You're like, on the that left was side, me. Going north on the left side before yeah, you hit yeah, Deer yeah. Springs. Yes. That's so funny. I've never seen a deer there. It's false advertising. It's true. I don't think, I don't think there's out. even a spring there. Yeah. There's no, no spring. There's drugs. It should be called Dry Roads. Dry Roads? Yeah. Just a Shitty road. drivers. Just a road. Uh, parkway. <laughs> yeah, no. If you have a truck, you have to tow a boat at some point in the you truck's to. life. Totally. Have you towed a boat yet? Yeah. Question. Not my own boat. Okay. All right. Uh, have you ever seen the double hitches that comes out, has the initial like tongue, and then there's a little tiny one on the side, and they have that big freaking spring torsion arm that yeah, hooks to your- stabilizer bar. Yeah, I had one. I had one on my my uh, camper, my pop up, the one that's spring loaded, or is it you the one that's friction? Trailer? This one was a friction one. So I had the load. Okay, so when I first got the trailer, I had the I, Jeep. I've seen the load levelers that you hook right. with chains up. So mm-hmm. not that the one that's actually that. hooks to the other little tiny uh-huh. hitch ball. Yep, I had that. So what too. does that do? So that's a sway control. So so why not? it's a friction plate. So you can you crank down the the side of it, and you can put more or less friction on these two friction plates. So if I'm driving down the road. And it starts doing that sway thing, like the uh, the like you saw in that video, the razor on the trailer. That thing will actually the friction of that will prevent that from happening. Why not just load your trailer correctly? Well, sometimes wind can cause it, so it doesn't matter how it's loaded. Mm. So the other way to stop that from happening is to reach down to your trailer brake and use the manual and yeah. apply trailer brake while still accelerating, and it'll straighten out the trailer. Oh yeah, because you're pulling it right, but. Um, the other part is uh, the sway control is is what that's for. 
Interesting. Okay. I like this. I knew. So my pop up. You've seen the pop up out front, right? Yeah. It's like thirty eight hundred pounds. It's heavy as fuck. But the person we bought it from used to tow it with a Crown Vic. Nice. No way. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So they towed it with the Crown Vic, which had a big enough motor for it, but I guess they were driving pre-having one of those hitches, and it just started getting it. They were on the freeway coming down from, like, Monterey, and the thing was just wah, wah, straight off the fucking road into the ditch. Like, wow, it was a wow. bad, bad yeah, day. That's, that's what happens. Yeah, so yeah. then they You like, can't just tow whatever the heck, however the heck. You gotta, you gotta know. put some some thought into it. You gotta it. know what's up. What's it like two thirds? So you're supposed to tow something that's a maximum of two thirds the max uh, tow rating of the vehicle. I heard something about that, or is that a myth? So you're talking about the the GVW the, of the vehicle or the tow the tow the trailer? So like the trailer, if the trailer is um, not the tongue weight, but like the weight of the trailer, like because you know how they have a max capacity for right. towing weight. So I heard that it was supposed to be two thirds of the uh, max capacity of the vehicle. Okay, so that might be true. So my Jeep has a tow rating of 3,500 pounds. Okay. My pop-up trailer I bought weighed 2,800 pounds. No. No, maybe it's it was... Like four-fifths. It might have been like 3,100 pounds, I think. Um... But then you fill it with water and throw three motorcycles on it and a generator and firewood and a cooler and all your clothes and helmets and gear. And, you know, 4,000 pounds plus later, I'm still towing it to the desert. And so, yes, there's recommended towing and then there's the calculated risk towing. It's okay. true. So I, what I did on my Jeep was I added airbags to the back and I put load levelers on the trailer so that it transfers the weight to the front of the Jeep, as well as I increased the spring capacity on the back. So that I helped it, and it made it fine, and I had a sway control, and I had a brake controller. You know, I had all the extra things that you need, um, but it was still, I was definitely maxed, maxed out on everything. So I'm glad I don't tow with the Jeep anymore. And now you have the truck. So now I have a uh, motorhome. Well, yeah. I guess so. But I did get the truck so that I could then tow out to the... You put that trailer, you know, 4,000 pounds worth of crap. Plus, I'd fill the bed of the truck with gear. And that truck was... I'd forget the trailer was back there. Like, it was just no big deal for the truck. But for the Jeep, it was a the pain in the ass. The truck was slow to begin with, so it's not like it's going to get any slower. Yeah, the truck just goes <laughs> the same speed, it. whether it's towing or not towing. Does not care. Me and Jake talked about that. We're like, the moment we get in this truck, we just want to go slow. I don't yeah, know why. It's just this relaxing That's feel. That's the way it goes. Just especially an old man with, truck, man. Especially you get with, in there, the you bench seat, with the bench seat that was in there before, it was like you just like sink into it. Yeah, we need to get you a, just, a bench seat again. The bench mm. seat was rad. Because the, the first time I've been in there since you put those smart car seats in there, was yesterday and i was like well this is good it works but how fast were you driving those are bucket seats they're not meant for going slow (laughs) it's a race car now i drive oh it's funny because my my, uh, david let my mother borrow his truck so she could move some stuff yesterday and you uh, know why she's used because he's a nice guy because he's a nice freaking guy (laughs) yeah so if you want to come in here and get a good nice guy experience when you're getting your worked on he's smart he's knowledgeable and he's cute too he cares (laughs) You yeah. guys are idiots. He's old, but that's it's all okay. About the <laughs> He's old. The gray Although slow and dangerous behind the wheel. <laughs> he still can serve a purpose. Yeah. Uh, thanks, okay, guys. So go on your mom. No, nice she drives like too. a little 2.0 turbo, like all wheel drive Hyundai. How much boost does it make? I don't know, but it's actually pound? Pretty, it's actually one pound. <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty fun. But she jumps in the truck and she's driving it like a race car. And I'm like, Mom, <laughs> oh God, what do you do? And I drive that big old Yukon XL, and so like I'm all about the grandpa speed. Yeah. I'm like, if I drive <laughs> we good. We need to save gas. If I can drive good, I can get 14.1 average. Right. And so if I drive poorly, I get like 12, which is really scary. Um, because you're like, man, that's a deep hole in the pocket. But, yeah, that truck just makes you want to, I mean, that's why every time you get behind one of those on, and you're driving a normal car, you're like, why is he going so slow? It's because the guy in that truck does not care. No. Yep. He's like, here we go. This truck is comfy. Yeah. So am I. Wow. Dude, my motorhome. Talk about gas mileage. V10, buddy. V10, <laughs> Triton V10. I'm getting. Oh, you like, came back in Brian's, right? Uh, from SEMA yeah. last year. Yeah. Oh yeah. You get like ten miles of the gallon. What? Just, dude, it, the 
<laughs> thing would kick down, and all of a sudden, it just feels like you're in a rocket ship. It was just so loud. <laughs> They're all like that, man. All I feel towing my Jeep, said. I'm going to get like six or seven miles to the gallon. But how many smiles awesome. to the gallon? Are how you many get? smiles to the gallon? At least three from your you family and none from you. Yeah. Well, it's super hot in here, and I'm pretty much over it. So, well, how much time do we have on this guy? We're good, dude. We're good. I think everybody's done listening. Everybody out there, you done listening to us? Yeah. I'm pretending yeah. like I'm seeing everybody say yes. You yeah. Guys yeah. All right. Cool. Well, then. All that's right. It. Bet Motorsports Podcast. Signing off. This has been the Bent Motorsports Podcast. Thanks for listening in. Be sure to give us a follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Bent Motorsports. Stay updated on the latest happenings, future projects, videos, and events here at the shop. Remember, guys, at Bent Motorsports, bits in stock, we've got it.